Today I'm going to talk about my five favorite non-maker making things. Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you some amazingly awesome and inexpensive things that will hopefully aid you in your own creative life. Now most of these items are related to health and pain so if you've experienced any of those while creating, stay tuned. So I want to say at the top of the video that none of these items have been sponsored in any way. They're simply items that I've found throughout the years and I thought that I'd share them with you. I do have some Amazon affiliate links below if you want to check them out. So if you're ready after all that, let's get started. So I wanted to start my list off with the least expensive item on here and also the easiest to procure. And that single item is hand lotion. Um, now I understand that it seems really silly for me to even say, but I'm convinced that this is the single most insignificant, seemingly insignificant item that I've introduced into my daily routine that has almost transformed the way, the speed, um, the mood that I have when creating. And that is really honestly hand lotion and taking my hand skin moisturization seriously. One of the worst things that can happen when you're working with any sort of delicate piece of fabric or textile, what have you, is when you snag it on your own hand skin when you're working on it. But it has made it to where I'm not biting my nails, my hands are in good condition, and I can confidently go and work with fabric without worrying about you know issues coming up. Now I have three different hand lotions to recommend mostly because each of them are, have different uses based on what your needs are and also everyone has specific preferences so I thought it was worth mentioning the different kinds that I like to use. But all in all you might not like the ones that I suggest uh, but I highly encourage you to find some sort of hand lotion that works for you scent wise, feeling wise, and all that jazz. Alright so at the top here my top favorite all-around hand lotion that I use all the time is called the Edamia Therapeutic Hand Repair Cream. This is specifically for healing your hands, which is really important, uh, especially if you're like me and you get really dry hands in the winter. But um, it also has the least amount of scent of all of the ones in this video. So for me, it's kind of my go-to, the one that I grab the most. I do want to caveat it with though, I don't use it if I know that I'm going to be handling fabric within about an hour or so. And I know that seems weird for me to recommend this on a video that's related to hand sewing, creating, and whatnot, but hear me out. If you only hydrate your skin right before you're going to be working with fabric or whatever, you might transfer those oils of, you know, the oils that are on your hand or just the oils that are in these lotions and that's not something that you want to do. So taking your hand hydration seriously all the time and adding this to your regimen is really really important and I think um, imperative actually to making sure that you don't snag things when you're working with them and that your hands are always in a decent condition. So this one I use like I said all the time. Um, I use it after I get out of the shower when my hands are still a little bit damp. I use it right before I go to bed when I wake up. Uh, anytime that I've been washing my hands uh, for any period of time, this is really the best lotion to just make sure that you put in a ton of moisture. It does feel greasy for about an hour, but it has been great because it absorbs really well into your hands. It's not particularly greasy, doesn't have too much of a scent, and um, it, I think that having this kind of lotion is actually what helped me stop biting my nails and my fingers. It, I'm 30. Yeah, I'm 30 now. And in the last two years, I have stopped biting my nails and my fingers. And I really think it's because I have added this whole moisturization thing to my regimen. I'm no longer picking and my nails are decent. The nail buds are growing back. I make sure to rub this lotion into my cuticles whenever I put it on and that is all around just helping my hands and I don't snag things anymore. So I cannot recommend this particular lotion enough. I really hope that you can find this. Um, I got this one on Amazon because they were out at my Walmart. 
So my second hand lotion recommendation is actually by a company called Bag Balm. The Bag Balm company is known for their hardworking hand salve, which is really great for protecting your hands if you're going to be doing any sort of work that they might get chapped or uh, blisters from. But they recently came out with this new hand and body lotion and it's awesome. I love this stuff. Now, it doesn't smell the greatest, I'm not going to lie. It does have a little bit of like a fennel type of smell, a little bit of a healy type of smell. So if that's not your cup of tea, this might not be the type for you. But what I love about it is that it absorbs in your hands within about 30 minutes. So I can confidently work with silk or any other sort of fabric uh, within about 30 minutes of putting this on. My third recommendation is specifically formulated for fiber artists. It's got minimal packaging, it's got a great smell to it, and it's also a solid lotion which is kind of fun because you don't have to worry about it bursting in your bag. It's called Happy Hands for Fiber Artists and it's made here in Ohio and what's so cool about it is that it does double duty. It actually works to condition your hands as well as condition the yarns that you're working with so that neither one gets uh, damaged in the process. It has a very light scent. It does have lavender and cedar in it, so that's something to consider. If you visit the link and see that it's not in stock, do check it out within a week or so and it should be restocked. Okay, so now that I've spent way too long talking about hand lotion of all things, it's not time to get on to the next item, which is hand braces. If you've already had hand issues in the past, you're probably well familiar with these, but I really think even if you haven't, that it's worth keeping one of these in your arsenal just in case, because you wanna really make sure that you keep your hand and arm and wrist alignment in check at all times. My favorite of these are these, actually they're Velcro. Um, it's like a little sleeve with a Velcro thingy on it. What I like to do is put this on if I know that I'm going to be sewing for a long period of time or if I've had pain at any point during the day. I do a lot of things with my hands. I'm sewing, I'm gardening, I'm washing dishes, I'm cooking. And also when I sleep, I tend to sleep with my hands kind of cuddled up to myself and they're contorted in a weird way. So having one of these keeps all of this alignment really in check and making sure that I don't bend my hands and keep them like this. This is bad. This is good. Bad. Good. Bad. Good. And this, it's hard. I have to try really hard to make this happen. So if you know that you're going to be doing a lot of hand work, this helps really keep you to work with all of your arm and all of your back and all of your hands all together as one. Well. There are lots of different styles of these. There are some that have um, hand support here if that's more of what you're needing. So really do check them out, keep them in your arsenal to make sure that you prevent hand injury at the first sign. Alrighty, for number three, it's actually a somewhat recent item that I've added to my studio and to my general working life. Um, and that is an ergonomic mouse. There are lots of different styles of ergonomic mice, um, mises, mouses, mouses. I, I don't know what to call it. I think I'm going to go with mouses. The kind that I have is called um, Nulaxi, like Galaxy. I don't know. My hands, for instance, are on the small side. I can reach an octave, so that's about eight inches uh, from my pinky to my thumb. And this one works really well, and it, I can certainly see how it will work for larger hands, too. So what this mouse actually does is it prevents your hand from getting in bad alignment. This part of your hand is actually on the desk, therefore keeping it in alignment. And also, it encourages you to be using more of your hand rather than just your fingers to command the mouse. This particular one has been really, really awesome, especially now that I'm doing pattern drafting on the computer and sometimes spending upwards of eight hours a day using the computer. If I did not have this, I would feel horrible. I would have horrible pain all the time. If you do a lot of work on the computer, it's probably worth it to not enter yourself on there so you can continue making and doing your hobbies. I really think that for $15 or $20, you could prevent a lot of injury. I, I just, I can't recommend this enough. So moving on up the list is anti-fatigue stuff. This is imperative if you're going to be standing for any period of time. This is something that every creator should have in their space. I personally have three anti-fatigue mats. I have one 
back behind me at my um, pressing station, I have two up in my kitchen at the places that I stand the most. The reason that I got them was because I kept having this awful pain that would radiate from my heels all the way up to my hips and then it would go up my spine. Not fun, not comfortable. So I ended up looking around and trying to figure out, you know, should I go to the chiropractor or should I start taking pain meds? And I realized that it's because I'm standing on hard floors. My sewing studio right now is in a basement. It's really just concrete. And my kitchen is hardwood floors. There was nothing to cushion my joints. Let me tell you, once I added these, game changer. The pain nearly went away. I'm not saying it completely went away because it probably will never completely go away, let's be honest. But it continues to get better and I notice that I'm not standing in bad posture. I'm not feeling pain later on when I'm sleeping at night. It really has made a huge difference in just making sure that my joints are nice and protected. Now if you know that you're going to be on your feet and also walking around, not stationary in one place, it might be worth investing or looking into some helpful footwear for yourself. Anything that has arch support that's properly made for your foot, um, anti-fatigue footwear, they do have those, or memory foam are going to help with your joints and also just make sure that the alignment of your body is better supported because your feet are really your support on the ground. I just use slippers and then I put inserts in them to make sure that I have proper arch support because I injured my foot over the summer. After 12 weeks of wearing these, I can't go back. I wear them literally all the time. I don't know how I got along without them. And now, the one we've all been waiting for. My favorite and most highly recommended item on this list the tailbone pillow. So this silly thing um, looks like it could be a hemorrhoid pillow and um, it certainly could help in that department. And, and my husband, when I pulled this out of the box, thought that it was for dangly bits when you're sitting down. But actually, this is for your tailbone and it helps your back of all things. My PT friend Natalie had recommended this to me just in general because I create a lot and it has been the best investment. I love this so much. I have two of them. I've got one that kind of goes around all of my um, sewing room and I've got one that stays in my car. And what it does is it actually makes it to where your tailbone doesn't have any sort of pressure on it because a lot of people tuck their pelvis and their tailbone in when sitting on any sort of furniture. And when you do that, it ends up popping out that lumbar curve, the lower curve of your spine. It pops it out to where there's no other place to go but making your spine in a C kind of shape. They're wonderful for computers, they're wonderful for sitting at your sewing machine, and really it's great to know that you can take one of these anywhere you go and you're not going to immediately resort to bad posture. It's helped with my pain levels in my neck and my upper back immensely and I can sit for longer periods of time without resorting to that bad posture situation. It's really, really wonderful. There are all different types of these. There are all different grades of these. So mine have um, slip covers that came with it that I use and Really, honestly, you can't go wrong if you're going to be sitting for any period of time. So I highly recommend looking online and seeing what one might work for you. I'll put the two different kinds that I have below. This is the single most recommended item that I share with my friends because I want them to keep their backs happy and be able to create as long as they can. So I really hope that in sharing it with you that you will also prevent yourself from injury and just keep your back happy. Okay, so if you've stayed this long, thank you so much for watching, and I really hope that if you decide to try any of these items out, that they help you in your own creative life. I know that they've helped me immensely, so if you do try them out, do let me know, comment below, and um, I'd love to hear your experience. If there's anything that I missed that you found in your own creative work uh, that I should try out, please let me know. I really want to try out some new gadgets and hopefully make things even better. I really hope that you all have a wonderful day and happy making.